What's going on guys? Welcome to the Betterman Project. Today we're talking about five key ideas from the book Millionaire Success Habits by Dean Graciosi. If you like breakdowns of some of the best money, business and self-development books, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button to not miss any of our value-packed videos. And let's get started. One of the main ideas of the book is that if you want to change your current situation, your income, or your life habits, you don't have to change who you are. You don't have to do a 360 with your life. For example, imagine a farmer. He gets up every day and drives his tractor a mile out to feed his cows. He drops off the food and drives back. And he does the same thing for 10, 15, 20 years. Eventually, the tractor will start to build ruts on its path where the farmer doesn't have to steer the tractor anymore. He just turns it on, puts it in gear, and lets go of the wheel, and the tractor just gets there. This happens with habits. The more we do them, the more automatic they become, the deeper the ruts become. But imagine if the farmer, instead of letting go of the wheel, decided to move the steering wheel just one half an inch to the right. A mile in, he would be so far from his old feeding grounds that he wouldn't be able to see them. In the book, Dean doesn't suggest to wake up tomorrow and start an entirely new life. Just start with small shifts and see how far that'll take you. Key idea number two, clarity. Let me know if this has ever happened to you. You feel like you have the potential to do something amazing with your life. You feel like you are working so hard, but it doesn't feel like you're moving. You don't feel closer to your goals. This is like having a Ferrari, incredibly fast car, driving 100 miles per hour, but not sure where you want to go. Especially in today's digital world, we are busier than ever. The internet world doesn't sleep. We are going faster than ever, but as Dean puts it, without a clear destination, going fast simply means we are getting lost faster. So before we begin exerting energy in all directions, let's figure out where we are and where we want to go. First of all, we must understand where we are. We can't get to our destination without knowing where we are first. Now, if you have a piece of paper, it would be very useful to write this down, but ask yourself, where are you right now? Not physically, but in life. What situations are you experiencing right now? Why are you watching this video right now? Whether you feel you have incredible potential but don't yet know how to tap into it, or you are already doing great but want to go to the next level in your life. Think about how useful a GPS is to take you places where you want to go. By asking yourself, where am I right now, gives your GPS a starting point. And once you have a starting point, we must find our destination. A great way to find your destination is to imagine yourself one year from now. And this year has been the best year of your life. You accomplished what you wanted and you are genuinely happy with your progress. Now looking back to that year, what did you do? How is your business doing? How much money are you making? How are your relationships? Where do you live? How is your lifestyle now compared to a year ago? What skills do you have now that you didn't have before? As you answer these questions, you will start creating a picture of how you want your life to be, your destination. Key idea number three, finding your why. Now, let's be honest. How many of us know that in order to be fit and healthy, we must eat certain foods and exercise regularly? But how many of us actually do it? Having a starting point and knowing our destination is a great way to begin our journey, but most of us know that even when we know where we want to go, it takes something deeper to become unstoppable and not let the inevitable obstacles discourage us from getting what we want. Knowing not only where we want to go, but why we want to get there can create that fuel we need to overcome those speed bumps that come with the journey. A really good way to find this fuel is by using what Dean calls the seven levels deep. Let's take the destination where we want to go and ask yourself, why do we want to go there? Then use that answer to ask yourself, why do you want that? And continue asking why for a total of seven times. That will take you seven levels deep on your purpose. Usually within the first four to five levels, we have answers that are premeditated. Those answers that we've given many times before. But once we get to the sixth and seventh level, we start digging our feelings and emotions to find our true reason why we want to accomplish our goals. As Dean puts it, the first are answers from the brain, the last are answers from the heart. So now, we don't just know where we are, but where we want to go and why we want it. Key idea number four, kill the villain within and awaken the superhero. 
There's a story in the book of a Navajo woman that told her grandson. She said that in all of us, we have two wolves. One of them is jealous, envious, malicious, with scarcity in its being. The other one is a powerful wolf who has compassion, ambition, positivity, abundance, and knows that he can accomplish anything he sets his heart and soul into. Then her grandson asked an important question. Well, which of these wolves wins the battle? And she responded, the one you feed. Just as this story tells us, we have a strong and powerful being as well as a negative one inside all of us. It is up to us which one we feed. But sometimes we feed this villain without even noticing. Dean talks about some of the ways we feed this villain without even realizing. Number 1. Negative Media At the moment, we are growing up with the internet and social media in a world where clicks equal money, where negative articles are the norm. The more shocking they are, the more attention they get. And whether we like it or not, it affects us. Something that Dean recommends is to go on a news diet where you are not exposed to all this negative media and spend that time feeding the hero instead of the villain. Number 2. How you carry yourself Imagine two people sitting in a coffee shop. One is slumped down, his eyes to the floor, and he's not very open. Then the waitress comes over and says, Hey sir, do you need anything else? And with a very low voice, he says, Um, no thank you. Now imagine the other person. He's sitting comfortably open. And when the waitress comes over to ask if he needs anything, he says in a powerful voice, No, I'm okay right now. Thank you, Cindy. Now, which one would you think has more confidence? Which one is feeding the hero and which one is feeding the villain? Which one would you think is genuinely happier? The second one, right? The way we carry ourselves influences the way we see ourselves. So by practicing a powerful, happy, and confident presence, we can actually influence how we feel about ourselves. I actually made a video all about body language, so if you want to check it out, it'll be in the upper right-hand corner or at the end of this video. Number 3. Focusing on your weaknesses Most of us, since we were young, we're told to focus on our weaknesses instead of our strengths. If we're not great at calculus, then it's time to do more calculus. Focusing most of our energy on the things that we are not good at can make us feel subconsciously inferior. But as Dean puts it, what if we say, the heck with my weaknesses, I'm going to be amazing at what I'm already good at, and switch your focus to feeling subconsciously powerful. Number 4. Your social circle Dean has a great way of illustrating this. He says that everyone is either a battery drainer or a battery charger. Some people rob us of confidence, while others empower us. And depending on who you're spending your time with, we are either draining our batteries and feeding our villain, or charging our batteries and feeding our hero. We as humans have a natural tendency to adapt to our environment. So if you surround yourself with financially wealthy and ambitious individuals, you are very likely to adapt and become one of them. Killing the villain and feeding the hero is so important. Think about this. What was the last time that you did something amazing? Whether you went on a date and shined, or made a big sell, or just made a good move in your life, and you did it all with terrible confidence? Probably never. Virtually all of your accomplishments happen when you had confidence and everything seemed possible when you fed the hero. Key idea number five, the power of your story. Many of us have a story of why we haven't reached our goals yet or why we can or can't reach our goals. Everyone has their own story that was developed throughout their life, whether they were passed down from their parents, the media, or experiences they had. But what we tell ourselves is simply an interpretation of what happened, a story seen through a lens of limiting beliefs. Dean says that our story can either be the wind behind your cell or the anchor that holds you down. It all depends on how you interpret it. If we can change the way we see these negative stories, we can turn this anchor into a superpower. A good way to do this is to think about a story that leads to a limiting belief. Dean gives a great personal example. He says that as a young kid, he was often called dumb for having dyslexia and not being able to read well, and for a period of time, that affected the way he saw himself. But he learned to look at the good in every story and realized that because he wasn't the best at reading, he was able to learn by watching and listening, which allowed him to learn different skills much faster. By looking for the good in his story, he was able to turn this anchor into a superpower. The way you interpret your story can dictate whether you will achieve something incredible or be the excuse for unhealthy habits. Whether you feed your hero or your villain.
All right, let's recap the five main ideas from the book Millionaire Success Habits by Dean Graciosi. Number one, small shifts yield big results. Number two, we must get clear where we are and where we want to go. Number three, finding your reason why you want to get there will give you the fuel to dominate obstacles. Number four, kill the villain within and awaken the superhero. Number five, look for the positive in every story. All right, guys, let me know in the comments below if you found this video useful. And if you have a suggestion for a topic or a book you want me to break down, let me know in the comments and you might be the reason for our next video. And as always, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.